Good morning. It is great to be in the house of the Lord today. Good to see you out on uh, this Pack the House Sunday, and we're excited and thrilled to have you. If this is your first time here as our guest today, we are honored and pleased to have you, and we just ask you to join in with us today as we're here to worship the Lord Jesus Christ. And it is an awesome privilege to be able to be here today at Victory Baptist Church to do so. A couple announcements to share with you. Uh, please, after the service today, stick around. We got some soups, we got some desserts, good food over here in the uh, family life, the gymnasium over here to, to my left. And uh, hope and pray you'll stick around. I'd love to have the opportunity to get to talk to you, introduce myself if, you've never, if we've never met before. And uh, if you're looking for a church home, we'd love for you to come back and be with us here at Victory. This is an awesome church to be a part of. A couple announcements also. Remember the Happy Heart Senior Group is going to be meeting uh, tomorrow at 11. And also another big event that's coming up here soon, September the 11th at 5 p.m. We're going to be having dinner and then a 6.30 start time of worship. And this is church in the park and we're just trying to get out of the church four walls here of this building and be in the community to reach out. So if you can, come to this event. It's going to be a great time. We're just going to be um, having a great time that evening. Pray for good weather. Uh, pray for a great turnout. And uh, just come casual. It's just going to be outside, so dress casual for that. But please keep that in mind. That's coming up on September the 11th there at the Kingston City Park. So just a lot of different things going on and a lot to be prayerful about also. Also, one other thing, Operation Christmas Shoebox, that is getting ready to start packing all the boxes, getting those filled up. Uh, this year, this goal is 400 shoe boxes to be filled. So if you'd like to and you can, please come help do that so we can get all these filled up and ship those off. Um, if you've never been a part of the actual process, I, I've been through... I uh, went with a group one time for a weekend, and we were there for a weekend helping with the shoe boxes of getting them out. You have to go through the boxes, and then they load them up into these huge boxes, and then they ship them off. It's quite the experience to see all the boxes that come in, but also you see videos of when these boxes go to these different countries, and a kid opens that box. Now, to us, some of those things may seem like they're very minute. They're not really that special at all. But when a child pulls something out of that box to see the sparkle that's in their eyes, just something else. And if you've never been able to see that, they've got videos online. But an awesome, awesome opportunity to be a part of that. So come help us as we fill these boxes so that they can be sent off and we can minister to the Samaritan's purse. All right. Also remember the offering this morning to my left. And before you leave, there the box in the vestibule. But uh, we're here to worship. And let's just expect God to do something marvelous today. And most importantly, if someone here today needs to be saved, let's play Today is the Day of Salvation. And let's just be praying for that. All right, let's start with a time of prayer, and then we'll ask our choir to come and lead us. Father, we thank you for this privilege. Thank you for all you do. Thank you, Father, for this time we've been able to gather here today to worship corporately. Father, we thank you in advance for what you're going to continue to do through the service. And as the choir leads us, we just worship you because you are worthy. And here in a short period of time, I pray you'd use me, Father, to speak your word. We love you. We praise you. Thank you once again for all you do. And it's all because of Jesus. It's possible. And we ask these things in his name. Amen. 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 Well, good morning. Let's go ahead and stand together as we sing, Since Jesus Came Into My Heart.
sing when we all get to heaven.
shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Amen.
upon you. Be gracious to you. Lord, turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. 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 It is great to be here today, isn't it? To worship the Lord. If you would turn with me to Luke chapter number 19, and we're going to be looking at verses 1 through 10. A very familiar story, a story that you have probably heard many, many, many times before. More than likely, as a child, you may have read this as you're reading through the gospel of Luke. Luke chapter 19, if you would stand with me as we honor the reading of God's Word. Luke 19, starting in verse number 1. And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans. And he was rich, and he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and could not for the press, because he was little of stature. And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste. And come down, for today I must abide at thy house. And he made haste, and came down, and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was gone to be guest with a man that is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house. For as much as he also is the son of Abraham, for the Son of Man is come to seek and to save 
that which was lost. Let us pray. Father, thank you for this privilege to be here today. Thank you for the honor to be able to stand behind this sacred desk here today. I pray that you will use me as you see fit today. Help me to speak what needs to be heard. Get me out of the way today. Father, speak through me. Speak through me your truth. And also those under the sound of my voice, I pray they'd be attentive and listen. If there's one here today that's lost, we pray today the day of salvation. Maybe today someone just needs to come because they've backslid. They're not living the way they should be for you. Today would be the day that they come. They recommit themselves to you and say from this day forward, I will live for you, O Lord. Father, we love you. We thank you once again. We praise you and we ask all these things. In the name above every name, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Like I mentioned to you, this is a very popular Bible story. This Bible story takes place in Jericho. Jericho is the lowest inhabited city on the face of the earth. It is 150 kilometers below sea level. That's how low that it is. Also, it is one of the oldest existing cities upon the face of the earth. So Jericho has a long, long history. We know many biblical stories have taken place in this city. But this story that we're reading about here today, that we're talking about here this morning, it is a short story about a short man who met a big Savior. A man that life was forever changed on a day where he was looking for the Master. We know the old Sunday school song, right? I could probably lead it in it today, lead the church in it today. You know it by memory. Remember the old song? Zacchaeus was a wee little man. And a wee little man was he. Remember, he has to do the sit, you got to do the motions too. He climbed up in, remember? He climbed up in the sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see. And as the Savior passed that way, he looked up in the tree. And I used to like this when I was a little boy and I used to sing that song and said, Zacchaeus, you come down. For I'm going to your house today. For I'm going to your house today. Well, I think there's four things that we see in this passage that can really help us today in understanding why this passage is so important for us in our life today. Well, first of all, we got to look at the species of the tree. We see here a sycamore tree. Now, there's things within biblical passages that if you don't really pay attention, you can just read over. Oftentimes, you can neglect it, and you're missing something that is really awesome to behold. Well, let's look at the species of the tree. Look at me at verse number 4. And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him. For he was to pass that way. Now why was it a sycamore tree? Why was it important to place this within God's written word about how important the sycamore tree was? Well, I believe there is a lesson for us to learn about a simple sycamore tree. See, a sycamore tree is a symbol of grace. When you look up what it means, many different trees have symbols and they have symbolism behind them. When you look at Jericho, a palm tree in Jericho, there is a symbol of righteousness and you see a lot of palm trees in Jericho if you've ever been able to go to the Holy Land area. But when we look at this, this sycamore tree, first of all we see the affection of God's grace. Now, if you've ever paid attention to a sycamore tree and the leaf that actually comes off of the tree, it's heart-shaped. You ever thought about that before, about a sycamore leaf? And I believe as we think about that being heart-shaped, I'm also brought to my attention about how much God loves us. How much God loves 
you. The Bible tells us that He gave His only begotten Son so that He would walk here upon this earth. He would die for our sins so that we could have eternal life. See, God cares about you today. He cares about you today. Maybe you're here today and you're lost. God cares and He loves you. He also loves you today, Christian. He loves you in the midst of what you're going through. He loves you so much. God cares about your financial situation. He cares about your infirmity. He cares about your dysfunctional family that you may be living in, the problems that you may be having going on in your life. He cares about your emotional pain. He cares about your loved ones. God loves you and He knows exactly what you're going through today. See, God's not a callous God. He's not unsympathetic. He's not someone that does not have a heart. He is touched with the feelings of your infirmities and is there to help you in your time of need. But also we see here about this tree... The accessibility of God's grace. See, a sycamore tree is actually pretty low to the ground. Its branches are pretty accessible. You could actually reach up, a small child could actually, and more than likely climb up into the tree and pull leaves off of that tree. It's easy to climb, low enough to get to. Even that a short man like Zacchaeus, could get to. And I think also about salvation. Salvation is very easy. Salvation is a process that's not too hard to achieve. You know, many times we think there's something that you have to do. you do to achieve it it is by grace that we are saved by faith it is a free gift today if I could give you anything this morning it would be this to tell you that salvation is free to all people not one person is exempt from that the Bible tells us whosoever will may come. I'm a whosoever will individual. We have today in some theological circles that think that Jesus only died for an elect group. That Jesus died for this group, but not for that group. Hey, I'm here this morning to tell you this. Jesus died for all people. All people. No one is exempt. The only reason a person goes to hell is the rejection of Jesus. That has nothing to do with God. It doesn't have anything to do with trusting in Jesus. It is your decision to make. And if you choose to reject Jesus, that's the person's fault. Not something to blame on an almighty, marvelous God. Like what it says in Isaiah 55.1. Ho, oh, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. And he that hath no money, come ye, buy and eat. Well, how can you buy when you have no money? It's like the little boy that was talking to another little boy. And he said, what do you do when your mama has no money? He says, simple. She goes to the mall and she says, charge it. Isn't that what happens in salvation? We don't have anything within ourselves to pay for the debt that we owe. There's not enough money filled in the banks all across this world that could pay for your sin debt. I don't care if you do everything in your power trying to pay for it. You will still 
miss out. The only way to have that debt cleared is to trust in Jesus and what He says when He stands before the Father. When we all are there one day, He said, the debt is on my account. I have paid a price that only I could pay. Salvation is by grace without works, saved by grace, kept by grace. But also another thing we see about this tree, an abundance of God's grace. See, a sycamore tree blossoms and bears fruit figs year round. That's what this tree does. When I think about God's grace, I think about how it will make your life fruitful and abundant. There is an abundance of it that is there for you. To live each and every day. God's grace is abundant to meet your every need. That is why the Apostle Paul said his grace. When he records what Jesus said. His grace is sufficient for all our needs. There's always, always enough grace. Always. So first of all we see the species of the tree. And then secondly, let's look at the center of the tree. Look with me here at verses 2 through 8 again. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and could not for the press, because he was little of stature. And he ran before and climbed up into the sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. When they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was gone to be a guest with a man that is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor, and I have taken anything from any man by false accusation. I restore him fourfold. So here we see the tree, and now we see a sinner that's up the tree. Let's look at his description. Zacchaeus was a high ranking publican, a tax collector. Actually, the Bible tells us he was the chief tax collector. I've heard pastor one time say this. He had a company called the IRS that stood for I'm rich and short. He was wealthy. The Bible tells us in verse number 2, he was wealthy because of the amount of money that he was able to take from others in their dues. The Bible also tells us in Luke 18, 24, that it's hard for a rich man to get saved. Now it's not saying that a rich man can't get saved. But what it's saying it is hard for a rich man to be saved. And that's because of the simple fact that riches can overtake someone's life. And that can become their God. We have that happen in our lives also. Something can become your God and you start to worship it. It's very easy to do. Don't fall into that trap. But he was despised. The Bible tells us in Luke 18 verses 10 through 13 that these men, these publicans were considered outcasts. People didn't want to talk to them. It's sort of like when the bill collector comes your way. Do you like talking to them? You want to strike up a conversation with them and say, how's your day going? No, we pretty much sometimes go the other way. When those bills come back in the mail... Now, I'm going to use the terminology here. Not that I accept this show, but there's a show called Sanford and Son. Y'all probably have seen that before. Red and I don't know. I think his son always used to think his name was Big Dummy because that's all he ever called him. But there was one part of the show I remember when bills would come, he'd say, just put them back in the mailbox. Let's just pretend they're not here. But a tax collector was there to come, and when people saw him, they probably ridiculed him, made fun of him, and did not like to see them come in their way. Publican in the Greek was telenones. They collected taxes 
from the Jews for the government. But also, he was short in stature. Oftentimes when they sing that song, I always think we're singing not we little man, but we little man is the way I've always heard it said. Short in height, short in character, short in spirit, short in goodness. And also I think about this from Romans 3.23, another thing that's short about him. And it's also for us today is that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That was also Zacchaeus. He was short in many ways, but also he had come short of the glory of God, just like you and I have done also. But let's look at his desire here. He was doing something good. You know why? Because the Bible tells us he was seeking Jesus. That's what it tells us in verse number 3. He was seeking out our Lord, but he could not get there because... Of the crowds. And also because he was short. He couldn't see. He couldn't see over the people in front of him. He was just wandering around aimlessly. Thinking how in the world am I ever going to find Jesus. You know oftentimes I believe that the devil will also put obstacles in our way. To keep us from seeing Jesus. Heard many stories where people say. I'm almost to the point. Of receiving Christ. I'm almost to the point of being saved. But I got on that pew. And I was thinking. What would someone else think if I go forward? What will that person that I know think about me. If I come forward and I admit that I'm lost. The devil presents those thoughts to us. And oftentimes we entertain them. And you know what happens? We delay. We delay. We delay. And we delay. And then you know what happens? Someday it'll be too late. Keep putting it off. That's what Satan wants you to do. Delay, delay, delay. But also we see here his determination. This short man, verse number 4, says he ran. He didn't care. He just started running. And here we see in verse number 4, And he climbed up in a sycamore tree to see him. The only thing he could do was he found this sycamore tree. He reached up, pulled himself up into the tree, and he started to look for Jesus. He was determined to see Jesus. Who here today is determined to see Jesus? Are you determined to see Jesus in such a way that you run and you will do anything to be able to see him? Zacchaeus was. Thirdly, the Savior under the tree. Look at verses 5 through 6 again. And when Jesus came to that place, he looked up and saw, lo and behold, it's Zacchaeus and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. And he made haste and come down and received him joyfully. Something really cool here is that Jesus came to where he was. I don't think this surprised Jesus at all that Zacchaeus was looking for him. It doesn't surprise me one bit that he knew exactly where Zacchaeus was. See, when the Lord sees a person that is sincerely seeking him, he will know to go wherever they are. I'm reminded in Acts chapter 10, Cornelius and Centurion, a commander in the Italian regiment of the military army of the Roman Empire. It was because of his earnestness to seek out that the door of salvation was open to the whole entire Gentile world. I'm so thankful that for me, in my testimony... On May the 9th, 1990, I thought I was coming and looking for the Lord, but He had already been looking for me. The day is the same for you as well. The day that you got saved, you may think to yourself, well, I was seeking out to the Lord. Well, hey, here's a news flash for you. He was already pursuing you. And He loves you today. If you're not saved today, He's pursuing you. 
He loves you and He wants to have a personal, intimate relationship with you. He wants to save you today. But you must call upon the name of the Lord. The Bible is very clear about that. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I'm thankful for that, aren't you? But also Jesus called him. It was a personal call. Jesus called him by name. He called Saul by name. He called Nathaniel by name. And guess what else? He calls you and me by name. He knows everything about you. He knows every little thing about you. And He calls you by name because He wants to have that eternal relationship with you. He wants to draw you unto Himself. It was an urgent call. It was now or never for Zacchaeus. Jesus possibly would never pass this way again as it would not be long before he would go to the cross. Zacchaeus wanted to see Jesus and Jesus came after Zacchaeus. It was a gracious call. See, there was no merit in Zacchaeus like we've mentioned already today. Zacchaeus had nothing that he could offer that was going to take care of his problem. It was a gracious call unto Zacchaeus To salvation. But let's look number four. The salvation of Zacchaeus. Look at verse number 6 through 10 again. I know some of these verses we're reading over again, but it's important to do so. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. That's good to know, isn't it? And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was gone to be guest with a man that is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. And Jesus said unto him, The day of salvation come to this house, for as much as he also is a son of Abraham, for the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. We see here about the salvation of Zacchaeus that he received Christ. Now Jesus came and sought him out. But still there was Zacchaeus who had to come down and receive the invitation. Jesus has extended an invitation to every single one of us. Every person across this world that has ever lived that is living or will live, has been extended an invitation. The invitation is given to you. It's like you go into a party, you get an invitation, you go or you don't go. That's your choice. Zacchaeus had a choice. He could have stayed up in that tree. I don't think he would have, though, because that would have defeated the person of him running and seeing Jesus. But an invitation has been extended to you today if you're lost. Will you receive it? Or are you not going to receive it? It's your choice. That's a choice that you have to make in and of yourself. But we see also here he rejoiced in Christ. It wasn't come to the Lord like going to a cemetery like someone had died. The Bible tells us that he made haste and he received Christ joyfully. It wasn't just something that happened and then he was thinking, oh, not that big of a deal. Not that big of a deal. Hey, oftentimes when people get saved, we'll come by, shake someone's hand, and we'll hug their neck. But hey, when someone gets saved, we ought to be smiling. We ought to be shouting. We ought to be excited over the fact of what has just happened in the life of a believer that is new in Christ. Be excited about that. Zacchaeus was excited about what had happened. He was happy In the Lord. But also a restoration was promised. Verse number 8. Listen to this. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord. Behold Lord the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation. I restore him fourfold. 
Wow. Hopefully I don't ruin a movie for you. If I do, you can chew me out about it later, okay? There's a good movie. It's kind of been out for a while. It's entitled Flywheel. Anybody ever seen that? It's a Christian movie. There's a flywheel that's part of the engine, and the guy couldn't figure out how to get it fixed, and he was talking to all kinds of people, trying to figure out how this thing gets in the engine because it would not work without the flywheel. But I think that he was also like a used car salesman. And he would take advantage of people. He'd sell people vehicles that he would lie about. Vehicles that were not running properly. That some things he could do to get them to run for a little bit, and then after they would be run for a while, they would start to have issues. Well, as he was going through this, he started to saw things crumble right before his own eyes. And then there was a guy that came into his life and started talking to him, sharing with him about the message of Jesus. And one day this man realized what he was missing in his life, and that was Jesus. That's why the story is called Flywheel, because it was important to have that flywheel for that engine to work. And if you want your life to be where it needs to be, and if you're missing Jesus, it'll never be right. It'll never be right. Never. And as this man trusted in Jesus, you know what he started to do? He went back over all of his files over the years. And every person that he took advantage of, he started to get money, even to the point of going into debt, and paying them back what he owed. And you know what happened after that? He saw God work in his life and begin to bless him. See, when you do things right and you do it for the Lord, the world may marvel and look at it and go, hey, why are you doing that? You need to think about self. But I'm telling you, if you do it the right way, God will bless you. Do it the right way. And this is what we see with Zacchaeus. Restoration is that one big difference that happens in the life of a person that has trusted in Jesus is that they will begin to look different, talk different, and act different. Zacchaeus, someone that people despised, had been taking money his whole life from him, he started to give back, even to the point of saying, I will return fourfold. That's a lot. You know, I've heard one person say this, one of the surest signs of repentance is when, I, when it opens a person's pocketbook. You heard that said before? But we see here this story of a short man named Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus was a wee little man, and a wee little man was he. Climbed up in that sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see. And as that Savior passed that way, he looked up in that tree and said, Zacchaeus, you come down, for I'm coming to your house today. I'm coming to your house today. And I believe, we don't know for sure if he was married, if he had kids, but I guarantee you when he came to their house, they were also saved that day. Their dad was different. The husband was different. When Jesus saves you, people will notice a difference in your life. The story of Zacchaeus shows Christ can save anybody. It doesn't matter how bad your situation is. It don't matter how far out you are. It doesn't matter if a person's on drugs, if they're on alcohol, if they're addicted to pornography, if whatever they're addicted to. The Lord can save them and bring them out of it. He can bring them out. I'm reminded of a story of a liberal professor who was giving a series of lectures at the University of Chicago. And as he was giving these lectures, he was speaking about how that he could state and defend that Jesus never rose from the dead. That was his series of lectures. We caught the attention of several people in the community. And one old-time preacher thought he would go and check out one of these lectures. As he sat there and he listened, he just sat there and brought an apple with him. Actually, I think he may have brought a couple with him. He was sitting there eating that apple, just chomping away, just 
he'd raise his leg over one leg, and then sometimes he'd raise the other one over, and just lean him back, eating that apple, just enjoying every bit of it. Well, the professor, the liberal professor, at the end of his lecture said, does anybody have any questions over what I presented to you today? The preacher stood up and just kept on eating his apple. Nobody else getting up, just this preacher continuing to eat there on that apple. The liberal professor said, do you have a question, anything you want to say? He said, yes. He said, can you tell me if this apple is bitter or sweet? And he took another bite. Well, of course I can't. Of course I can't tell you if that apple is bitter or sweet. Because I can't eat it. You're actually the one eating it. The preacher then said, Then how can you tell me if the resurrection is real or not if you haven't yet tasted of the Savior? The liberal professor just looked at him and just walked off the stage. How can you today say that it's just all a bunch of baloney. I don't know about all that stuff. I've heard people say this before. How can you say that until you have actually tasted of what the Savior has to offer? I like what it says here in Psalm 34, verse number 8. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in his name. Have you tasted the Savior? Have you tasted what He has to offer? For us that are saved today, you have tasted that. You know it's real. You know it's genuine. But for you today that have never, ever, ever done that, I offer that to you today. Receive the gift of salvation. If the Holy Spirit's dealing with you today, receive that gift. Because it's the most important decision you will ever make. And I know from this story that Zacchaeus was never the same little short man that he was before. Yes, he was still going to be short. Yes, he was probably still going to have to find his way through crowds. But one difference that day is that Jesus sought him out and his life was changed for all eternity. Your life also can change. You just have to trust in the one that can change it for you. Amen. Let's stand this morning. We're going to have a song of invitation. Father, we love you. We thank you for this privilege to be able to come here today. Thank you for the guests that are here today, some that I've never met before, and it's great to see them here today. And I just pray if there's someone that's here, it's lost. They know they're lost. They know they have never trusted in Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior. I pray if that's them today, when this invitation's given, I want to extend today the invitation for them to come. I'd love to share with them about how they can have that personal relationship with Jesus, that personal intimate relationship with Him and how that they can call and trust in Him. But also, Father, there may be some here today that just need to come for whatever it might be. You know their situation. You know what they're going through. Maybe they've walked in today heavy-hearted with a lot going on in their life. I pray they'd come today and they'd kneel down and just acknowledge that they need help trusting You that can bring them through whatever they're going through. If that's them, I encourage them also to come. Father, we love you. And I pray as this invitation is given, if people need to come, I pray they would. Not worrying about what someone else is going to say. Who cares what they say? Because eternity is at stake. And Father, we need to quit worrying about what people say and just worry about what you think. And we need to trust in you because you'll bring us through whatever it is we're going through. We love you once again, praise you, and thank you, and ask this all in Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen.
good to be here this morning, and thank you if you are here today because someone invited you and you're a first-time guest, we're honored to have you. We also have a little gift for you out in the vestibule. It's a little bag, and we always give that to first-time guests that are here. Um, so please uh, remember to grab one of those. We have someone out there that can help you with that. Uh, so, And also, it's just good to see the altar field. That just blesses my heart. I'm, I'm a little old school with that, but I like to see people in the altar. I do. Um, because, uh, like I said, who cares what people say if you go? We oftentimes think, well, what are they going to think about me? Or what are they going to say? They're going to give me a phone call? After? Who cares? I mean, if you need to go, go. We had to get into this thing worrying about what people think. Well, who cares what people think? I mean, one day, and I'll, I know I'll be, I'll hush, but one day when we stand before God and we give an account of our life, it's not going to matter what someone else thinks or what that person thinks. It's going to matter about what you did for the Lord. We've got to get over this stuff about worrying about people thinking. I mean, we do that a lot. I'm not saying I am completely exempt from that. I, I, I do it sometimes too, but we need to get over that. Get over that stuff. If you want to worship him, worship him. If you want to lift your hand, if you want to say amen, worship him. If somebody gets offended by you saying amen or raising your hand, phooey on them. (laughs) You heard that word before, phooey? Phooey on them. (laughs) Do it. Worship the Lord. If you need to come, come. All right? But, uh, all right. Sermon number two is over. So, All right. (laughs) No, it's been good to be here and... Please stick around after the completion of the service and come fellowship with us. We got lots of food. We got desserts. We've got plenty to eat. And hopefully you'll stay because I'd like to come around and just say hello to you. And because uh, there's everyone here today, I don't, I don't know names. And so um, I'd like to kind of come up to you and just introduce myself. And uh, hopefully you'll stick around for that. Remember Wednesday night, we have our Holy Spirit study we're going through. This will be number two Wednesday, and uh, so keep that in mind. We start at 7 o'clock here in the sanctuary. If you want to learn more about the Holy Spirit, come on Wednesday nights. Digging deeper at 7 o'clock, so keep that in mind as well. All right, let's go ahead and let's dismiss in a word of prayer, and then we'll also bless the food as well. Oh, oh, you, oh, you wanted to... Okay, well, I think you're already a member, right? Oh, well, hey, you're a member, and we just welcome you back in. Miss Margaret's here with us today. I talked to her last week. Margaret Wright, yes. Yeah, Margaret Wright has been away from us for a little while, and uh, she's back. And we, we spoke on the phone earlier this week, and I told her it'd be awesome to see her today. Many of you probably remember her. She's been gone for just a little bit, but uh, glad to see you here today. And, um, man, just happy to see you here, but... No, you don't need to rejoin or anything like that. You've just been away for a short period of time. We're just thankful you're home, okay? So uh, glad to have her back. All right, let's go ahead and let's pray, and we will bless um, the food also. Um, Let's see. Brother, pray for us this morning if you wouldn't mind. Bless the food. All right. 